hello guys welcome to civil concept and in this video i will show you the nine thumb rules to design a rcc beam okay so you can see in this picture this is our beam okay and uh, also you can see in this uh, 3d model that this beam has supported on this column okay so how to design this beam to sustain the required load okay so, so we will see here the thumb rules to design a rcc column which can sustain the required load okay so first of our first point is the minimum width of beam should not be less than 200 mm okay so you can see in this picture this is our width okay so this part is now known as width and this is our depth of the beam okay so the minimum width should not be less than our 200 mm okay so it should not be less than 200 mm now our second point is the percentage of reinforcement in beam uh, should be from 1% to 2% of the total gross uh, sectional area okay so what is gross sectional area gross sectional area is uh, simply when we multiply this width and depth of the beam then we will get what the gross cross sectional area and this percentage the percentage of reinforcement reinforcement means simply the rebar okay so the percentage of rebar should not be less than one percent and greater than two percent in this beam okay now point number three is according to is code for beam of rectangular cross section it shall always be preferred to have width to depth ratio greater than 0 0.3 okay so we should always prefer uh, prefer the width to depth ratio greater than uh, 0 0.3 it is not necessary here the width and depth depend on the uh, load acting on this beam okay but we have to prefer that the width and depth ratio should not be less than 0 0.3 okay for example if bw is the width of the beam and d is the depth then bw divided by d will be greater than 0 0.3 and it should be 0 point uh, greater than 0 0.3 for example if our width is 200 mm and depth is 600 mm then when we simply uh, divide this width uh, by depth then we will get how much 0 0.33 which is greater than 0 0.3 and this design will be okay okay so this will be 0 0.33 and it will be okay for this beam now point number four is the depth of beam should not be more than one by fourth of the carrier span okay so what is carrier span first of all you can see this is a column this is a column and this is a beam okay so from this edge of this column and this edge of the column this is known as what carrier span okay for example if d is the depth of the beam and l is carrier span then d must be less than or equal to l by 4 okay however for calculating the depth of the beam using thumb rule we use the formula depth of the beam l by 10 to l by 12 okay so simply according to the thumb rule we will use what depth of the beam we calculate the depth of the beam by l by 10 to l by 12 okay where l is the carrier span of the beam okay let us see an example so here in example depth and width of the beam as per thumb rule is uh shown in the figure okay so the image shows that the example which is supported on two column the carrier span between column is 4000 mm okay so this carrier span is ours 4000 mm then how much should be the depth and width of this beam okay so depth will be according to the thumb rule we have uh, discussed previously that according to thumb rule the depth of the beam should be how much l by 10 to l by 12 so i am taking l by 12 so 4000 divided by 12 we will get how much 334 mm okay so width will be how much d by 1.5 which will be our 334 which we have already calculated divided by 1.5 and we will get how much 222.6 mm okay so this will be our approx depth and width of the beam when we uh, start designing the beam of any structure okay now the approximately we can take uh, in the uh, in the place of 334 we can take 350 and in the place of 220 we can take 250 mm for 4000 mm distance beam okay so if our killer cover between this uh, column is 4000 mm then simply we can assume 350 mm by 250 mm as a uh, depth and width of the beam and it depends on the different load on this beam now our fifth point is according to IS code the minimum diameter of the shear reinforcement i stirrups uh, should always be more than 8 mm okay so you can see here this is our beam and this particle member 
this vertical uh, rebar is known as what stirrups okay so the stirrups uh, should be of minimum 8 mm uh, diameter okay so we should not use the uh, stirrups of less than 8 mm now our point number six is when the depth of the beam exceeds 500 mm okay so this is approx 20 inch okay so if our uh, depth of the beam is increasing 500 mm then we should provide side face reinforcement along the two face of the beam okay so you can see here this is our beam and this is our top reinforcement and this is our bottom reinforcement okay and this one you can see this is our side reinforcement okay so if the depth of the uh, beam is increasing by uh, more than 500 mm while designing then we have to provide what side reinforcement okay so the total area of this side face reinforcement should not be less than 0.1% of the web area okay so web area is simply this okay and uh, we should not provide less than 0.1% of the area okay and the side of uh, face reinforcement should be distributed equally on the two side or both side okay so you can see here if we have provided one reinforcement here then we have to also provide one re reinforcement here okay if we are providing two reinforcement in this side then we should al also provide here two reinforcement in this side as well okay now point number seven is the minimum overlapping length of the bar in a beam shall always be provided at least equals to 75 mm or simply 750 mm okay so you can see here this is our column this is our column and this is our beam okay now we have to provide rebar and we should always provide lapping of the rebar in the beam more than 750 mm okay so you can see here and you one thing uh it is very important that lapping should not be provided at the bottom of this beam okay because most of the moment is acting at this point okay so we have to provide lapping at here or here or here in the beam okay now point number eight is a minimum clear cover of 40 mm salvage provided in the beam okay so what is clear cover clear cover is simply the uh, distance between this rebar and this upper surface of the beam okay upper surface or lower surface okay so you can see here this is the rebar and this is the uh, surface of the concrete and this gap this distance between this rebar and upper surface is known as what clear cover okay so it should not be less than almost 40 mm in the beam now our ninth point and last point is the general criteria which depend on the load and design of this beam okay so first point is you have 20 grade of concrete should be used in a beam construction okay so uh, there are different grade of concrete and we have to prepare prefer more than m20 grade of concrete like for m20 grade of concrete we have to use the mix ratio like 1 1 is to 5 okay and 3 okay and these are the mix ratio of m20 grade of concrete it means that if we use one part of cement then we have to provide 1.5 parts of sand and three parts of aggregate to prepare the concrete for m20 grade of concrete okay now point number two is the minimum of four bars shall be provided in beam two bars should be of 12 mm at the top and two bars of 16 mm at the bottom okay so upper bar should be of minimum two uh, two number and lower bar should be also in two in number and uh, the uh, diameter of the rebar at the bottom of the beam should be how much uh, 16 mm and upper should be 12 mm okay after that the spacing between the stirrups in a beam should not be greater than 100 mm at the mid span and 150 mm at the edge okay so this is our beam okay this is our beam and uh, this is our in section okay for example this is our in section and this is our mid mid span okay so at the uh, mid span okay you can see here uh, at the mid span we should not provide greater than 100 mm okay so at the uh, mid span this is still up should not be uh, at the distance of more than 100 mm and at the edge we should not provide the distance between this stirrups more than 150 mm okay now the uh, development length of the beam should not less than 50 d okay where d is the diameter of the rebar you can see here this is known as our development length okay so it helps to uh, transfer the stress from this beam to this core of concrete okay so this is known as what development length and it uh, length is from here up to here and uh, it should not be less than 50 d d is the diameter for example if we are 
uh, using 12 mm of rebar then we have to provide how much development length 50 into 12 okay and it will give us how much 600 mm and this is our 600 mm which is, will be the development length of the uh, beam okay so guys this was the uh, very important nine thumb rule points uh, to design a rcc beam okay if you have any question then you can comment below i will reply you and please like this video and subscribe to this channel for new update about civil engineering thank you